Hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for attending. So what I'll cover today, as Ejen mentioned, is a review of the new features that are coming in the Adams 2018.0 release. Uh, high level are listed here, and we'll, uh, we'll go into these one at a time now in some more detail. So in Adams 2018.0, we've got some uh, exciting new enhancements in the Adams real-time product. Uh, first, increased real-time sampling rate. Uh, that means, uh, in layman's terms, uh, models are going faster. We can keep up with real-time uh, uh, and keep up with real-time at, at a faster rate. Uh, this has been done and accomplished through two primary uh, two primary areas. One, um, performance improvements in the real-time integrator itself, and then general solver performance improvements. Uh, which benefit everybody, not just users of Adams Real Time. It's a great thing about Adams Real Time. When the Adams Real Time product has requirements to go faster, um, one of those ways of making that happen benefits everybody, and that's just making the solver, Adams solver in general, go faster. So, especially models that have beam forces and common constraints, rev joints, uh, trans joints, those kinds of things, um, are moving uh, a bit faster, should be noticeably faster, models that have a lot of those types of elements in them. Also, um, in Adam's real time, we've introduced the parameterized FMU. Again, not necessarily specific to Adam's real time, but it does come to bear heavily on the Adam's real time use case of wanting to tweak uh, and modify values of uh, certain parameters of a model, an Adam's model that's been exported as an FMU. Uh, this helps for ha faster what if studies, say, in the online environment of changing things like hard point locations. Uh, or say scaling pushing stiffnesses, things like that on a vehicle in the online real-time environment, uh, this can be done without having to go back and ask for a new FMU to be exported from your Adams analyst. Uh, so this, again, of course, can benefit anybody using an FMU. Uh, in, in the functional mock-up interface terms, these are called fixed parameters. Uh, so this is really just exposing parameters to the consumer of an FMU. Again, it has really nice uh, workflow improvements and enhancements uh, for the real-time user on the online environment, particularly when that person is maybe a different different person than, uh, than the person who exported the FMU in the first place. Also, uh, let's see, in Adam's car, we've added uh, several new events and templates this release. Uh, five different uh, new templates are available in the uh, shared databases that come with Adam's car and a number of new events or, if they extended events, uh, the frequency response, sign with well, turn diameter, and steady state drift, those first four listed here are all new events this release, uh, new standard events this release in Adam's car, and then there have been extensions done to the static car setup iterations, the lane change, the step steer, and the dynamic constant radius events. Also, Adam's car, uh, there's another template that I didn't mention on the previous slide uh, that is a new template showing how to model a more detailed engine. This is, I would say, a medium complexity engine model, something, say, between what we've had in car for a long time and, uh, you know, a full fidelity uh, engine model that you might get with a uh, one of our partner products like, uh, like Virtual Engine from FEV where, you know, they're modeling uh, fine details of valve springs and timing chains and timing belts and things like that, bearings, all that kind of stuff. So this is sort of a medium complexity model. It uses a 3D curve to represent the, the cylinder pressure versus crank angle and RPM, and that, that curve is scaled by throttle demanded uh, by the throttle demand uh, to produce the power, and it has a drag torque uh, as function of RPM and throttle demand that acts, acts on the crankshaft. And then uh, there's a conventional engine torque curve that's used in quasi-statics when the crankshaft is, is set to zero. Uh, this engine template and subsystem files can be found in the ACAR concept CDB. Uh, so you can take a look at how that's done there. There the example is for uh, the I-4 uh, configuration you see uh, zipping along on the animation on the right side there. Also in Adam's car, there's a new performance option for the SDI test rig. This reduces the test rig complexity for uh, real-time and HIL applications. Uh, so what it basically lets us do is say if we're external signal driven, then um, uh, all the uh, driver input channels can be defined by plant input, so it makes things go a little bit faster. So again, you can think of a real-time scenario or maybe a software in the loop scenario whereby the um, the 
signals, um, some of the signals are coming from hardware in the loop, software in the loop situations. Um, this is a uh, slightly more efficient, about like I said, 10 to 15 percent more efficient uh, option to have for this test rig. The curve manager, uh, in the curve manager in Adams car, we've seen some extensions there, um, adding curve manager support for a number of Adams driveline property files listed here. Also adding uh, table and plot support for 3D splines. And there's a sort of new plot and data table view. So previously you could see these things independently. The, you could either look at the data in plot format or in tabular format. Uh, now you also have the option to look at those two things together. And we also do have the option uh, to have the curve manager window displayed at the same, uh, same time as the main, uh, the main modeling window for Adams, uh, for Adams car and Adams driveline. So some usability enhancements here for the curve manager. Moving on to Adams view. Uh, in Adams view, uh, Python scripting work continues. You recall in Adams 2017, uh, we introduced the Python scripting alternative to the Adams view CMD language. And this uh, was introduced in covering uh, Adams view modeling uh, actions. So building, uh, building models, objects in the database, um, that are part of uh, core Adams view models covered with uh, Python scripting uh, in Adams 2017. This release, the Adams Python interface, is extended here in Adams 2018 to cover simulation commands and objects and results import uh, actions. Also, a little bit around uh, simulation settings covered there as well here in 2018 with Python scripting. And uh, moving forward, uh, this calendar year, we'll be working on extending Python scripting in other areas of code, such as the Adams Post Processor. Also, uh, with Adams 2018, uh, we have done the migration to Python 3 from Python 2.7.x. And what that means is not much for the Adams Python interface itself. The, the Python that we debuted back in Adams 2017 was uh, uh, from the get-go Python, uh, Python 3 compliant, but obviously things that other folks write, uh, the Python scripts that uh, you may be writing um, uh, around and things you're doing around those uh, Adams Python interface uh, classes and methods may be uh, may not necessarily be Python 3 compliant, but they, they need to be now, starting with Adams 2018. And there's some help and some hyperlinks in the documentation that describe some tips and tricks that we learned along the way, uh, uh, looking at all of that and looking at Python 3 compliance and some links to other documentation that will help you along on that path if that's, uh, if that's something you need to do. Also in Adam's view, uh, updates to CAD interoperability support, so version support for import of a uh, number of CAD formats has been updated. Uh, the full list is in the table here and in the release guide and uh, product documentation. A few of the notable updates, I mentioned the bullet points here uh, for some notable updates of version numbers in Katia, Creo, Inventor, SolidWorks, and NX. I know some of our customers have been uh, eager to get. In the Adams Post Processor, we've made some enhancements to this release. Um, there's a advancing curve style of plot animation. So instead of just being able to have that little line zip over the plot as the animation goes side by side, we can now actually animate the curves uh, within the post processor, so that's kind of fun. We can do things both uh, looking at the whole plot like you see on the top or with that moving time window uh, uh, option on the bottom there that you were seeing right in there where the, where the time window can actually, uh, time window, the time axis can move here. I think here I've got it set, for example, to five seconds. Uh, no, 10 seconds it looks like there. 10 seconds of scrolling window zipping along by. And what this means is we can also animate uh, plot standalone, uh, so you don't necessarily have to have a model animation adjacent in, uh, on, on that same page in Adam's post processor. We could just animate plots uh, in standalone mode if we uh, so desire. Also in the Adam's post processor, we have implemented the capability to use multiple plot axes of the same dimension on the same plot. It used to be if you had a situation on the left here where you had maybe say uh, uh, two curves uh, co-plotted, uh, cross-plotted on the same uh, same single plot that 
those curves, if they had the same dimension, would share the same axis, which was unfortunate when you had axis limits, uh, when you had curves that had drastically different data at different values. You know, a small load that's being perturbed somewhere in the model, a large load being perturbed somewhere else in the model. So now the action, the example on the screens plot, uh, screenshot here, uh, if you have this condition where one curve, uh, you know, say curve two is of the same dimension, you can just say place on a new axis, and you'll get two of these. Uh, you get you get multiple axes for each, uh, multiple axes, a separate uh, a separate uh, dependent axis for each curve, even though they have the same dimension. One of my favorite uh, and I think most impactful features this release uh, is coming here more on the uh, solver side. Here is the flexibility body, flexible body performance improvements that we've added this release. Um, this is quite impactful for um, many, many flexible body use cases, and it's improved solve time in the models that we've been looking at here that have, again, our, our, our traditional MNF-based linear flex bodies. Uh, it has improved uh, solve time quite significantly. We're seeing gains in some models here of one and a half to two and a half uh, X speed up for models that have, say, one significant flex body where that flex body is the dominant uh, dominant portion of the model with regards to uh, with regards to the solve time of the model. Really useful for models with any number of modes, um, uh, particularly uh, useful when we get into higher number of modes and higher frequency modes. But definitely, uh, definitely seeing this impactful even on uh, even on simpler models. And we'll see speed improvements not only for models with one significant flex body, but also speed improvements for models where you've got multiple flex bodies uh, and you're using SMP uh, with uh, more threads than the number of flex bodies that you have. This is accomplished um, with two new formulations. This is not on by default. Um, you, you have to go in and tell Adam Solver uh, in the solver settings that you want to use one of these new formulations or optimized formulation, formula, formulation or our max optimization formulation. Um, these do come with some restrictions, why I said this is impactful for many, many flex body use cases, but not all. So there are a few restrictions, Kupko Pro's here that we see uh, generalized damping is unsupported, um, full custom inertia coupling is unsupported and flex body contact are not permitted. Those are the, those are the, the significant ones. Uh, you do have to use HHC or GSTIF I3 uh, for now, and you can't apply motions directly to flex body markers. And then if you want to go to the max optimization uh, item, which may perform faster, their constraints on directly on flex bodies are, are unsupported currently. But the uh, regular optimized or the optimized formulation um, uh, doesn't have this last uh, this last restriction. So a few restrictions to watch out for, but I think uh, there's a number of use cases where this, this may be really, really impactful and uh, get a, a really nice performance gain out of your model. So I encourage folks to try this out with their models. Also in AMS 2018, a number of other uh, miscellaneous enhancements I want to discuss. Um, model copy can now has a safe states option. So previously in Adam's view, you could do this thing called model copy where you could save the positions of the model, positions of uh, bodies in the model uh, at, a given, um, at a given output step from a simulation, save those and, and use that to populate in Adam's view a new model that you could use a new CMD model, you know, independent of the solver session running or anything like that. Um, here now we've extended that, so it's not just saving positions, but saving um, initial velocities, loads in the model, uh, flexible body modal displacements and velocities, load states and springs, bushings, uh, state variables. We can even index time-dependent functions if we need to, if you want to as an option, uh, whereby uh, you know, you've got, uh, you know, if you're, you're saving a certain time, but you want those time-dependent user-written functions uh, to act like it's time 2.5 instead of time zero, we can, we can do those things too. Uh, so that's a nice uh, productivity uh, feature here, particularly if you want to get a model into a certain state and then save that off as a, as a standalone you know, CMD Adams view model that you can use later. Also in AMS 2018, another nice usability enhancement uh, is the introduction of the parameterized runtime function. We've had a function up here for a long time, this little f of x button up here for a long time that covers design time functions. So you can have an object uh, for the function that takes uh, arguments 
and reuse that with uh, for runtime for design time functions. We've now basically done the same thing for runtime functions. Uh, so it's really nice if you are writing, say, your own complex uh, runtime expressions, and you want to apply those uh, to a number of places in a model. I mean, it's going to be this big, long, complex expression, run runtime expression, but all it really changes where you're applying it in the model is maybe, you know, uh, one or two markers, right? And everything else is the same. So instead of having copy and paste all of those things around and then edit them all one at a time, uh, you could have them all reference uh, the same function and then just manage edits to that function once. So it's a nice, uh, a nice usability enhancement for, uh, for the runtime, for runtime expressions that could be referenced in a number of places in the model. Uh, we've also made some enhancements uh, along the lines of flexible bodies with regards to uh, force connectivity. So we basically means we allow floating markers on flexible bodies uh, with this release. So G-forces, V-forces, V-torques, those uh, atom solver elements uh, use flexible bodies and previously could not be placed directly onto a flexible body. You'd have to use a dummy part or something like that. So now. Uh, no need to use those tricks, and so this is good for, say, user-defined contact functions or elastic connections, for example. Uh, we also have the ability to preview uh, Adam's Duflex uh, generated RBEs before we uh, uh, before we go off and create the MNF. Uh, we've also added a minimum disk space threshold setting in uh, uh, in the registry editor, editor for Adam. So this is a a nice way to instruct Adam Solver to tell you it's not going to start unless you've got a certain amount of disk space available in the working directory. Uh, we may add some other uh, uh, some other things to this in future releases that uh, leverage that. But right now, it's so your your solver jobs don't uh, uh, don't complain and uh, fail to run and fail to fail to uh, to write results when uh, the disk the hard disk uh, fills up. So this is a way just to set a threshold below which you wouldn't want uh, you wouldn't want solver to start. You want to give you a warning right at the beginning, say I'm not going to bother starting that job, for example. We've also added support for object names longer than 80 characters here as well, so that we can read some notes on that in the release guide. So we can get up to uh, you know around we recommend going up around 160 characters or so. Uh, though in some cases uh, we definitely have some products that will add characters to object names. We have to be a little bit careful. So there's some discussion about that in the documentation more. We can probably get up to uh, even around 240 characters if, uh, uh, if we're careful not using uh, uh, capabilities, features that uh, sort of double lengths of uh, names and things. Find details of that are listed in the documentation. You can have a look. It gives us a little more flexibility in naming objects. Uh, last but not least, I do want to mention that uh, uh, we do we are launching a new vertical product uh, called Adams Drill for the oil and gas drilling industry uh, for usage uh, and solving the same kind of problems that uh, a lot of folks in other industries like to solve with Adams, you know, reducing dysfunction, increasing performance of a product. Uh, so this is an exciting new vertical for that industry. Uh, it's also generated some exciting new. Uh, requirements on post-processing and plotting, a uh, number of types that are use, useful there. And so we'd like to start extending these to the general Adams post-processor uh, and exposing them in more of a general fashion than in a vertical-specific fashion. We've started doing that in this release already with the animating plots, the drawing plots, and standalone animating plots. And we'll probably uh, get to, over the next, uh, next couple of releases, get to uh, extending some of these other plot types into the general Adams post-processor world. There are some CMD, uh, there is some CMD exposure of some of these, some of these things that don't have full GUI support in the common Adams post-processor right now. Uh, so for folks that are, are scripters and tinkerers, uh, you may be able to find some exciting things you can do in CMD right now. We'll be exposing more of this more generally in, uh, in coming releases. I guess that wasn't last but least. This is last but not least. Uh, platform support, um, as usual, moving platform support ahead um, with each release. So in 2018.0, with each major release, continuing to support uh, Windows 7, Windows 10, and adding a few uh, Linux platforms uh, that you see listed here, and uh, dropping uh, SUSE 11 SB3 this release. And a final note: Adams 2018 does require an upgrade to uh, the MSC licensing product, FlexLM, 
that need to upgrade from 11.9, where we've been for a number of years now, to 11.13 for Adams 2018 to work. There are big, bold, red letter things in uh, various release documentations, the product info doc and the release guide uh, that talk about that and talk about this in a little bit more detail. So be sure to do that uh, when you upgrade to Adams 2018.